Gymnema Silvestre and thought you might be interested in uh, how they work, or at least what's known about how they work. A little bit uh, today about um, Gymnema Silvestri. It's a supplement. It's uh, used for uh, uh, to combat diabetes. It's actually been around for several hundred years. It's been used in Ayurvedic medicine. The name comes from a uh, Hindi word called the sugar destroyer. It's a woody plant, a woody climber. It's found in West Africa, Sri Lanka, India. The original uh, part one that I did, this is part two. Part one, look looked at what is it, what's it used for, and does it work. Now, the, the science is not very good around, around this, is like, just like it isn't great around a lot of supplements, just not a lot of work done in the area. If you look at the science, I'll show you a couple of the articles. They're just more descriptive type of things. Uh, one of the reasons I bring that up in terms of this discussion is the uh, discussion of active ingredient. You'll see that there's a simple listed active ingredient, germarin or germar, which is a 35 amino acid polypeptide or, you know, protein. Amino acids in a row, that's a protein. Polypeptide, peptide is a, the, the building block of proteins. Now, you get that description of a single active ingredient, but, and then you get this. This doesn't look like a 35, poly, uh, 35 um, amino acid polypeptide to me, but that's also listed as... Uh, under the biochemical name of uh, Gymnema Silvestri and Germar. It's also used, by the way, for weight loss and uh, laxatives or diuretics. This is a typical article. It's a fairly lightweight article. No randomized clinical trials that I could find anywhere, but a lot of just descriptive type things. Now, what does it do? It blocks the sweet and sugar receptors, evidently on the tongue, in the bloodstream, and uh, intestinal sugar receptors. It may, it appears to increase insulin secretion and may actually um, increase islet cell growth. Again, uh, fairly, and a lot of claims there, but not a whole lot of uh, science to support it. With anything, any supplement, you need to look at both sides, look at the safety. Here, the safety record, like most supplements, is pretty, pretty clean. Some of the things that you see warnings about are hypoglycemia, Again, I don't think it's strong enough to be a major danger in that area, but if you're piling on a lot of different hypoglycemics and medications, then yeah, you could consider some risk there. The laxative and diuretic risks, um, the reasons that you gave it in the first place. Pregnancy is, you know, there's lists of almost everything you get very concerned about pregnancy. Uh, liver toxicity, again, just a couple of mentions, but not a lot of... Uh, clear information. So, why am I covering HMA, HMG-CoA reductase? That gets into this next study. HMG-CoA reductase is the action point for statins. They are also called HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. Why am I mentioning that right now? Is that a total out-of-the-blue comment? The reality is, no, it's not. Uh, you'll see in this, in this article that I'm going to cover for this video, uh, phytochemical and pharmacological properties of Gymnema silvestre, an important medicinal plant. It actually has an impact um, in this area, metabolic pathway. As I covered before, uh, this, this is just some uh, follow-up. Now, let me go back and uh, make a comment about the uh, molecular structure one of the statements made by that article is, how does it do the, um, how does it block uh, amino, how does it block uh, sugar receptors in the tongue, blood, and uh, gut? Because molecularly, it looks like sugar. Here's what sugars look like molecularly. Glucose, fructose, and uh, sucrose. And I guess you could say they look like that. Uh, at least glucose is a six carbon, well, five carbons and an oxygen. It's a six atom ring. Most of these are six atom rings. I don't see any five atom rings on here like you do with, uh, the, uh, with fructose and uh, part of sucrose. So, hmm. 
And sucrose, by the way, is what? A glucose and a fructose bound together. So, but maybe, you know, maybe your tongue, maybe the receptors think that that looks alike. As I mentioned, we'll get into why I brought up the uh, HMG-CoA business. I also will get into cytochrome P450 interactions. If you don't re recognize or remember that, cytochrome for P450 is a, is a metabolic pathway. It's fairly nonspecific. There are several different cytochromes which metabolize and are involved in, in several metabolic pathways. What you can get is take one drug that stimulates the cytochrome 450 activities, then take another drug that is metabolized by cytochrome P450. It can, the two drugs can impact the dosages of each other. For example, phenytoin, uh, a, a seizure medicine, is an inducer uh, of cytochrome P450. If you give uh, donepezil or mm, simvastatin or atorvastatin, uh, these are all drugs that are impacted by cytochrome uh, P450 and other cytochromes and can, be, can therefore impact the dosages of each other. So why am I bringing that up? Again, just be patient. We're going to get there, and it's in this article. Phytochemical and Pharmacological Properties of Gymnema Silvestre. Now, it says an important medicinal plant. I think these guys are big fans of the plant. I've used it a few times. I know that uh, there's a, a lot of folks that are into supplements that are using it as well. I'm not going to reread through the abstract other than this last sentence. The review explores the transition of a tra traditional therapeutic to a modern contemporary medication with an overview of phytochemistry and pharmacological activities and its phytoconstituents. You hear phyto there a couple of times. Phyto, again, just means plant. So phytochemistry means plant chemistry, phytoconstituents, plant uh, components of it. These guys go on to mention that there are about 45,000 plant species uh, in India, with about 10% of them uh, being used in endocrine activities like uh, diabetes. It goes on to discuss, discuss other uh, hypoglycemic drugs such as sulf sulfonylureas uh, and biguanides. Biguanides is, uh, metformin is a biguanide. And then it goes on to say that there are adverse side effects. Sulfonylureas do actually have some very significant adverse side effects. Metformin does not appear to have the as sig significant a side effects as we used to think, at least in terms of lactic acidosis. That's been reviewed a couple of times by, during Cochrane reviews, and they really found that it doesn't, unlike the other biguanides that do. So again, as you continue to go through this article, it does get better in terms of the uh, biochemistry, but it's they paint with a fairly large brush in terms of their, uh, their assumptions. I'm not going to go into the traditional perspective, the taxonomy, the phytochemical perspectives. I will, however, show you some of the, quote, phytoconstituents, end quote. As you see, the, the gymnemoids are, appear to be a, an entire class of drugs, or, or um, not drugs, but chemicals, which are found in this plant. Gymnemic acids, uh, acetyl gymno, uh, gymno uh, sapocins, sapocins alone, it, sapocins being S A P O S I N. So, again, without getting too deep and taking too much time, just making the point that there's a lot of different chemicals in this phyto soup. And it's, again, not quite so clear exactly which ones do what. As they mention on later, well, just one other point. Those are the chemicals that, that the earlier comments were molecularly, they fit into uh, sugar receptors and actually blocked them. So, yes, there have been, there have been studies showing that you swish and swallow uh, gymnema components and, you can't, and then try to taste things later and you can't taste sugar or sweetness as well. Now this gets back into, you remember I asked the question a few minutes ago, uh, why would I talk about statins? Well, this is how um, gymn, 
uh, Jim Nima components are made, it starts on the mevalonic acid pathway in the cytoplasm, which starts with acetyl-CoA. The third component in that pathway, that's a well-known pathway, by the way, the third component, the third enzyme is HMG-CoA reductase. Now, what is that used for? Well, you can go on to make uh, statins, uh, or excuse me, uh, LDL out of HMG-CoA, and uh, reduc HMG-CoA reductase is how statins impact it. They inhibit that activity. As I showed you a few minutes ago, that's part of the, uh, the pathway. Now, if you go, continue to go down this pathway, again, you get to the gym, gymnemoids. Remember, I also mentioned cytochrome P450. Cytochrome P450 is part of the very last couple of steps before you get creation, the gymnemoid uh, activities, the gymnemic acids and the other uh, gymnema components. So what does all of this mean? I don't think it's uh, earth-shaking. It does help those guys. A lot of folks that are interested in supplements don't know how they work and haven't really taken the time to look at the research around them. I know, there again, there are several folks who are interested in Gymnema Silvestre and thought you might be interested in uh, how they work, or at least what's known about how they work. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for your interest. And if you could, comment and tell me, uh, tell me what you think about Gymnema. What, do you use it? Does knowing a little bit more about it uh, impact you in any way? Does it make you want to use it, make you want to try it, make you want to stop it? Thanks. CINT Access event is happening in LA, Anaheim, September 28th with uh, David Mites for the full afternoon plus a full um, CIMT plus the reading on it, $245. Thanks.